So good morning. Take a comfortable seated posture for today's centering practice. Feel your shoulders relax down and away from your ears. And just take a moment to make any adjustments that you need to to your seat so that you're really comfortable. And one thing that can pull us away from the practice of focus and concentration is the desire to move, right? And sometimes we need to respond to that desire if we're in a really uncomfortable place, but other times we can sit with that discomfort, watch it, and let it dissipate. But you'll have your best chance if you're in a comfortable position from the beginning. So feel free to be picky with yourself, make adjustments, get settled. And then once you do feel settled, Gently close the eyes and notice where you can find stillness in the shape that you're in. Take a moment to scan through your body and just notice if there are any areas that are holding or working to keep you here that maybe you don't need to be. You want to try and balance physical effort with a sense of ease, doing just as much as necessary to keep the body upright and letting go of anything extra. Try and notice where your center of gravity is right now. Are you leaning forward or back or more to the right or left side? And if so, just subtly adjust until you feel your spine centered over the back of the hips. And feel a downward energy through the pelvis into the floor. And then an upward energy from the lower back all the way up the spine and out the crown of the head. And take a moment to acknowledge your mood this morning and where your thoughts are right now. What type of mental energy you are starting this practice with and if or how that relates in any way to your physical energy right now. Just begin the process of shifting your focus away from your thoughts and onto your own breath. Noticing the sound and sensation of the breath and any other qualities that you're aware of. If the mind feels distracted, you can try repeating inhale, exhale, or breathe in, breathe out with your breath. Start to purposefully slow down and deepen the origin of your breath, taking more time to inhale and expand the body, and more time to exhale and contract the body. Imagine this breath like a wave washing in and out of you. And as 
we're moving through our posture practice this morning, check in with your breath regularly. Let it always be there and moving. And even if you are not matching my cueing, if you need to breathe more quickly or more slowly than my cues, that's fine. Just keep breathing deeply without falling into a holding pattern. Especially check in when we're in a posture that feels challenging to you or that might be new or really tests your range of motion. We're just going to start to do a gentle warm-up coordinating physical motion with the breath. You float the eyes open. On an inhalation, open the arms and reach over your head. Exhale and release. Twice more. Inhale, gather that energy and lengthen up. Exhale, let it go. Once again, inhale, reach up. Now we're going to exhale, twist to the left, slip the arms open. Wrap the left arm around your lower back and the right hand crosses to the left knee. Each time you inhale, press against that knee and lift up a little taller. And exhale, feel your twist deep and gently. You can turn your head to the left if you like, bringing some rotation to your neck. And the next time you exhale, gently release and face forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, twist to the right. Sweep the right arm behind your back. Left hand crosses over to the right knee. And let that twist evolve with your breath and you can turn your head to the right. Next time you exhale, release, face forward. Good, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, take the left hand down and side bend, reaching the right arm over your face. You can bend down into the left elbow and actively reach to stretch down the right side. The next time you inhale, push off with the left hand, reach up. Exhale, other side, right hand down as you lean over to the right. Bend down into that elbow and keep rooting down through your left hip so you stay connected to your seat and help deepen the stretch in the lower left side. Good, push down off the right hand. Inhale, come up and reach through both arms. Exhale, let it go. Good, uncross your ankles. Let's come into table pose. You can move aside anything that you might have been sitting on. And we'll take some spinal waves or cat cow. On an inhalation, lift your tailbone, chest, and chin. Exhale, drop the tailbone, tuck the chin to the chest. Again, inhaling. And exhaling. Continue through this movement. And feel free to add any other directions that might feel good to you. Some lateral side to side motion, really getting into the waist or into the hips, just waking up the spine. And the next time that you exhale through a round spine, that can be our last one, let's return back to the neutral table pose. Extend your right leg behind you and actively press through that heel. Coming into balance, reach your left arm forward. Reach these limbs as far apart as you can. Actively push them out with your right palm and draw your navel in. Slow, steady breath. One more breath in, exhale, release. Other side, straighten your left leg behind you, reaching all the way to the heel. Right arm forward, one long line, supporting with the shoulder and an active core, deep, slow breath.
And the next time you exhale, release. Keep your hips in line over the knees and walk your arms forward. Exhale, the chest and armpits down for half down dog. Let your head come to the floor or a block if it doesn't touch. Active through the arms, just like in the full pose. So press into the palms, extend your elbows. Take three more breaths here. And then on your next breath in, lift the head, come back to table pose. From here, step your right foot in between the hands, low lunge. Walk your left knee a little farther back and sink down into the hips. We're just going to take some movement back and forth between here and our runner stretch or half split. So feel free to use blocks if your hamstring is tight. We're going to exhale, rock the hips back, straighten the right leg and lift the toes up. And then inhale, return to your low lunge. So do that a few times. Exhale, hips back as you extend the right leg. Inhale, return. Do three or four more at your own pace. Just lengthening the right hamstrings. Warming up the knee and the hip. The next time that you go back into that half split, let's stay there. Press the back of the thigh and knee toward the floor. Point the toes up toward the ceiling. Get as long through the right leg as you can. Good, lengthen your spine. Feel your sternum lift. Engage your back. And on an exhalation, come back into your low lunge. Let's lift the left knee up off of the ground into a high lunge. Reach all the way up through the back of that heel. On an inhalation breath, reach the arms forward and up, coming to balance in a high crescent lunge. Lengthening upward through the spine, through the arms, as you stay low in the front leg. Good. From here, exhale the left hand down, spinal twist. Rotate from the belly button, up your spine, and see if you can look toward your right thumb or somewhere else if that's not comfortable for your neck. One more breath in. Exhale, right hand to the floor. From here, step to plank, right foot back. Bring the feet and legs together, shoulders over the palms, five steady breaths. One more breath in. As you exhale, lower through chaturanga all the way to the ground. Point your toes. Squeeze the shoulders back, inhale, cobra. Exhale, let it go. Twice more, inhale, roll up, open the chest. Exhale, release. And again, inhale. Exhale, let it go. Press back up to your knees and we'll step the left foot forward, low lunge. Sink down into the hips, adjust your back knee a little farther away if you can. And just notice how this side feels compared to the right. And we'll take that movement back and forth between here and our half split or runner's pose. On an exhalation, send the hips back as you straighten the left leg, toes up, inhale, Come forward to your low lunge. Exhale, rock back, extend the leg. Inhale, return. Do that a few more times with your breath. And I move my hands when I do this. You can keep them at the front if the hamstring is really loose and you can straighten the leg, but I usually adjust my hands back with me. The 
The next time that you go back into your half split, let's stay here. Really press the back of the left thigh toward the ground. Actively pull the toes up, engaging the front of the ankle. Long through your spine. The next time you exhale, return to your low lunge. Let's lift the back knee up, high lunge. Get active through the front side of that thigh and reach out your heel, stretching your Achilles. On an inhalation, let's rise up, high crescent lunge. Lengthen your spine, actively reach through your arms as you steady your balance here. The next time you exhale, right hand to the floor, spinal twist. Rotate deeply as you reach up still with the left arm and lift that back knee nice and high. Good, everybody. Exhale, left hand to the floor. Step back, plank pose. Feet and legs together, shoulders over the palms. Take five steady breaths. One more breath in. Exhale, chaturanga to the floor. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, push up to the knees. Exhale, hips back and lift, downward facing dog. Separate your feet a few inches apart, adjust your hands if you need to, and settle in. Feel free to do a little stretching through the back of the legs if you want to pedal the feet a few times, or any other little movement here that helps you wake up this pose. On your next inhalation, look forward. Exhale, walk up to your hands. Inhale to the flat back position. Exhale, fold forward. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, extend your spine and arms. Exhale, fold over the legs. Once again, inhale. And exhale, forward bend, five breaths. Let go through the back of the neck. And on your next breath in, let's come up to stand. Open the arms through flat back and then reach up. Exhale, release. Good, let's take some sun salutations. Come to the front of your mat if you're not quite there. We'll start in mountain pose, arms by your sides. On an inhalation, begin by reaching up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank. Deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, push up. Exhale, rock back and lift. Downward facing dog. Make any adjustments you need to. And then settle into your breath. At least five more. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, come to stand, reach up. Exhale, release. Second round, inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank. Inhale deeply. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, push to plank or table. Exhale, back to down dog. Adjust and breathe. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release. We'll take one more round and I'll cue upward facing dog, but feel free to stay with cobra if you prefer. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank. Inhale, deeply. Exhale, hover and chaturanga. Inhale, press to upward facing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes to down dog. Take five deep breaths. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release. You're going to stand with the feet together. We're going to take one round of Sun Series B, just slightly modified. On an inhalation breath, bend your knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, dive forward and fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. Inhale deeply. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, make your way to down dog. Once you're there, inhale, raise your right leg up. Exhale, step to a high lunge. Round your back heel for warrior one. Inhale, come up. Bend deeply into your right knee and lift your left knee nice and straight. Rotate your upper body forward. The next time you exhale, hands to the ground, lift your back heel. Inhale, step to down dog. Take a moment to settle. And then the next time you breathe in, raise your left leg. Exhale, step the foot through, round your back heel. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Deep bend in the front knee, lift in the back knee. The next time you exhale, hands down, back heel up. We're going to plank. Inhale, step back. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Let go through the back of your neck. Gently tuck your chin to your chest. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Feet together, bend your knees. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, stand, release the arms. Good, gently close your eyes. Stand to your mountain pose. Slow down the breath.
Once the breath feels calm again, float the eyes open. We're going to take a standing sequence, so if you like to use blocks for triangle pose or a side angle posture, have them on the right side of your mat. We're going to keep the right foot forward, step back with the left foot, big space, and increase that distance so you've got a lot of space between the feet, and the front heel intersects with the back arch. Let's keep both legs straight to begin for triangle pose. Open the arms out to the sides, rock your hips back, and then move your upper body forward as far as you can before you pivot the arms, right hand down, left arm up. And then rein in any excessive arching in your lower back. If you feel a huge bend there, tuck your tailbone in to lengthen your spine. And then rotate the left rib cage back, opening the front side of the upper body. Good. Keep breathing deeply and actively squeeze every muscle in your legs here. The next time you go to exhale, contract your core and lift your torso back up. Good. Bend your right knee deeply, warrior two. Should be roughly the same position of the feet, but if you're not quite far enough apart, you can inch your front foot ahead. Actively reach the arms apart. Feel your biceps and triceps contract. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Good. Get low in that front leg. Good. From here, like triangle pose, lean your upper body forward as far as you can. Take your right hand down outside of the foot to the block or the floor. Sweep your left arm forward and then over your face, creating a long diagonal line from the fingertips to the left foot. Extended side angle. Good. Stay low in that front knee. And just check that the knee is not drifting toward the left. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the medial ligaments. Try and press the knee into the right bicep. And that'll help keep engaging your outer hip and pointing the knee forward. Good. A few more breaths here. Back leg is still strong and straight. And look down. Exhale, left hand to the floor. Lift your back heel. You should be in a lunge. From here, step to plank pose, right foot back. Good, take a deep breath in, exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra or up dog, exhale, down dog. From this down dog, raise your right leg up, and then open that hip out to the side, bend your right knee for a passive quad stretch. Try and press evenly through both of your hands. And see if this allows you to drop your left heel a little lower to the floor, stretching the calf and Achilles. One more deep breath in. Exhale, return the right foot to the floor, down dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Stay here. Hold on to your elbows, crossing with the forearms, and gently sway your torso side to side. Let go through your neck. Feel your shoulders sink down. And you can let that swaying motion stop and let go of your elbows. Inhale to the flat back position and hold it here. Bring your hands to the waist and squeeze your shoulders back. The next time you exhale, just press your hips forward in space to stand upright. Okay, let's take that for the other side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Creating that nice big space between the feet for triangle pose. Slight angle of the back foot and want front heel to back arch. Let's open the arms out to the side and get active in the legs. Rock your hips back, upper body forward, reach, 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 then pivot your arms. Left hand 
to the leg or the block or the floor, right arm up. Good, lengthen your lower back. If you feel a lot of arching, curl your tailbone forward. And then rotate your right rib cage back, maybe glancing up with the thumb. Good, deep, energized breath. The next time you exhale, bring your navel in and lift your body upright. Good, bend your left knee deeply, warrior two. Adjust your feet if you need to. You want to get really low in that front leg, strong and straight in the back leg. Good, everybody. Breathe deeply here. Feel that intensity in front leg and hip. The next time you exhale, lean as far forward as you can lean, and then put the left hand down outside of the foot. Sweep the right arm over your face, extended side angle pose. If the hand doesn't reach the floor, use that block and try and press the left knee against the bicep, keeping that rotation of the thigh bone, keeping the hip opening here. Good, nice long line, a few more breaths. Look down, exhale, right hand to the mat, lift your heel, should put you in a lunge. From here, step to plank, feet and legs together, take a deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower, inhale, up dog or cobra, exhale, down dog. From this down dog, raise your left leg up, open the hip out to the side and bend your left knee, quad stretch. Try and keep the shoulders level and lower your right heel toward the ground. And the next time you exhale, lower your left foot back to downward facing dog. And then let's bring the knees to the floor, child's pose. Let's take the wide knee version. You can point the toes, sit back toward your heels, upper body extending through the legs. Let your shoulders and arms relax and close your eyes. Notice the sensations and the energy in your body. And bring your mental focus back to your breath if it's elsewhere. From here, bring yourself back up to table pose. We're going to work on side plank this morning. We're going to take two versions. First one starts from table. So I'm going to straighten my right leg behind me and then open the hip and put the sole of the foot on the floor. So just like that foot was in side angle. My left foot, I'm going to kick back a little bit. So it's kind of like a, a balanced stand here. Then come off of your right hand, open and reach your right arm up toward the ceiling. Stack your shoulder blades, squeeze them together, and then actively reach your right wrist up, away from the shoulder. Good, feel your right ribs draw back, just like we did in triangle pose a moment ago. And if you want to work on a little bit of hip strength, try and raise your right leg now off of the mat, actively reaching away from the hip. Good, exhale the right foot to the floor and the right hand back down. Step the knee back to your table pose and we'll switch sides. Straighten your left leg behind you and then open the hips. You can lay the sole of the foot and heel on the floor and kick your right foot back a little bit. 
then open to the left, reach that left arm up toward the ceiling, stacking the shoulder blades, which squeeze together, but the left wrist reaches up. And then really line your top shoulder over the, or excuse me, your right shoulder over the right wrist. And then if you can, contract your outer left hip and raise that leg up off the mat. Good, exhale, left foot back to the floor, left hand back to the floor, find table again. So that's version one, which you can repeat. Your lower leg is doing a lot of the support for you. If you want to try version two or three, coming from full plank, line the shoulders up underneath your, or over your wrist rather, step your feet back to a full plank pose, bring your left palm in a little bit closer, and slowly roll the outside edge, the pinky edge of your left foot. And then bring your right hand to the waist as you open up and eventually reach that arm toward the ceiling. Okay, so make sure you're not on the left ankle bone, you're on the edge of the foot. If you want something in between this and what we just did, step your top leg over the bottom leg and put that foot on the floor. It'll give you a little bit more support, but your arm and shoulder will still be doing a lot. So wherever you are here, try and take a few more breaths, squeeze your waist, lifting the left side of it up away from the floor. Good, exhale, right hand down, separate your palms, lift back to down dog, or you can rest with the knees down. Let's try the other side. You're either going to repeat the knee down version or come forward to plank, feet and legs together. Move your right hand in a little closer to the left. Come to the outside edge of your right foot. Slowly open. Feel your right shoulder blade root in toward the spine, and then raise your left arm when you're ready. Good, breathe as evenly as you can. Lift your right waist away from the floor. Good, exhale, left hand to the mat, space the palms apart and lift back, down dog. Tuck your chin toward your chest, lengthen the back of your neck. One more breath in, exhale, bring the knees down. Good, in this table pose, Flip your hands so the back of your hands on the mat and the fingers point toward your knees. Just give your wrists a little stretch here. If you're already getting a stretch, you can stay. If you're not, I like reaching my hips toward my heels, just kind of rocking the weight back and forward a little bit. If this is too intense, you can bring your hands a little closer to the knees. Just want to stretch all those little muscles in the back of the wrist here. Good. and then return to the regular hand position in table pose. You can walk them slightly ahead of the shoulders and lift again to down dog. And then from this down dog, look forward and inhale, exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, open the arms, come all the way up. Exhale, release. Good. Let's take a wide stance on the mat. Separate the feet about as wide as a warrior two, but turn your heels out and the big toes slightly in. We're going to take a shoulder opening variation in this wide-legged forward bend, so feel free to use a strap if you like. Let's take the hands behind the back, either connecting with a strap or interlacing the fingers. Good. Squeeze the shoulders back and gently reach the fist toward the ground. Take a deep breath in. Lift your ribcage. Exhale, hips back, upper body forward. 
Let your head release down as the arms gradually lift up away from your spine. Slow, deep breath. As your body is getting used to being in the pose, see if you can feel the weight of your hips shift forward slightly so that you're not pressing only into the heels, but across the whole surface area of your feet. Good, take a few more breaths. You're gonna stay in your forward bend. Exhale, lower the arms. Separate the hands or put the strap down and take your hands between your feet, either on blocks or on the floor. And space the hands about shoulder width apart. The next time that you inhale, lift your head and chest and walk your hands or blocks forward so that you find a flat back position. Spine parallel to the floor. Let's take the left hand under the face, right hand comes up as we twist to the right. Engage your core and rotate from your navel all the way up the spine. And notice if your left hip dropped with this twist. If it did, lift it up again. It might feel like you're not twisting as deeply, but try and do your twist from your waist on up, not by dropping in your pelvis. Good. The next time you exhale, take the right hand down, re-lengthen the spine, and then right hand down, left arm up as you rotate, turning the ribcage and the chest. Good. Keep lifting your right hip joint up so you don't collapse there. One more breath in. Exhale. Release. Go look over at the front of your mat, whichever foot that is. It's the right one for me. Point that foot forward and walk the hands there. End up in a lunge with your front knee bent deeply. Good. Let's bring the back knee to the floor. Low lunge. Take both arms inside of that front foot. Move the foot over about two inches and turn it out. And let's drop the knee away from the shoulder. Good. Stay low in the hips here. And depending on how this feels, you can either stay upright if it's already quite intense, or you can bring your elbows to the floor or to two blocks. And if you are going lower with the upper body, try and maintain as much length in the spine as you can. Notice if your back ends up rounding a lot like this in an effort to get down, you're actually pulling out of the hip opening here if your spine looks like this. So maybe not necessary to go down if your back ends up curling like this. Good. If you're down on the elbows, come back up to your hands. Let's move the right foot even farther over to the side. So space your palms shoulder width apart. Lift your back knee up. So we're in a high lunge with a wide stance. In one smooth motion, exhale and step to plank. So let's hold here. I want you to then try and step your right foot outside of the right hand again, right where it was. Let's do that again. Exhale, step to plank. See if you can do that with as little extra motion in the body. Step the right foot forward, outside of the hand. Once more, step it back to plank, and then forward, outside of the hand. Good, back to plank, and lift. Downward facing dog, separate the hands, or excuse me, separate the feet. Good, let's take a high lunge to the other side. So just directly from here, step your left foot forward, or if you were doing the other side to me, whichever leg you haven't done, bring the back knee to the mat, both arms inside of that front leg. Good, adjust the foot out two inches and turn it out at an angle. 
Open the knee inside away from your shoulder. Good. Stay here and breathe. And again, you can be right here, higher upper body position on the hands or elbows to the floor or blocks if that doesn't make your spine round and your hips lift up and back. Keep the breath smooth and even. All right, if you are down on your elbows, come back up to your hands. Move your front foot out even wider so that you can plant your palms shoulder width apart on the mat. Lift your back knee up, all right? So super strong here. Already feel plank in your body with as little side to side motion as possible. Step your left foot back to plank. Stay strong in the core, step it forward where it just was, outside the hand. Good, do that twice more. Step it back and step it forward. Again, back and forward, good, step it back, and lift, downward facing dog, nice work everybody, let your head drop, tuck the chin to the chest, and press back against the palms, and bring the feet and legs together, shift forward into plank pose, take a deep breath in, Exhale, lower all the way to the ground. Once you're on the ground, support your forehead with your left forearm. Bend your right knee, reach back for the top of the foot or the ankle for a quad stretch. So that little action that we just did requires the hip flexors to contract really strongly, so now we want to stretch them. If you're not getting a lot of hip stretch, try squeezing your glutes and pressing the front of the pelvis into the floor. That'll lengthen your saws and quad a bit more. And bend your elbow, bringing the heel closer to the hip. And also try hovering the thigh up off of the mat an inch or so. It'll give you probably the deepest stretch in the front of the leg. Feel it's release and switch sides, right forearm supports the forehead, bend your left knee and reach back for the foot. Whatever you can reach there, quad stretch. The next time you exhale, release. Turn your head to one side, let your shoulders melt. Take a few breaths. And we'll take that again, legs together, forehead down. Roll your shoulder width back and then lift everything up. Good. Lift your ribs a little higher. One more breath in. Exhale, let it go. Head to the other side. Let your shoulders melt. Release. And 
And one more time, forehead down, legs together, shoulders back. Lift up into locust, active breath. Then lift your legs a little higher. One more breath in. Exhale, let it go. Good. Melt down through the shoulders. Separate your legs a little wider than your hips. And bend the knees. So your feet lift up. Let's just drop the feet back and forth, side to side, just to help loosen up the lower back. Good. Let your legs drop. We're going to keep them a little wider apart than the hips here. Let's point the toes and engage your legs strongly. Put your forehead on the mat and the palms outside of the chest for cobra pose. Now I want you to squeeze your shoulders back and push the front of your pelvis against the mat. So you're going to tuck your tailbone and squeeze the glutes. And now lift the chest and ribs up into a high cobra, front of the pelvis pushing down. The legs are wide here. Slight bend in the elbows, shoulders down, sternum and ribcage up. Good. Keep squeezing your glutes, bend your knees, and point the toes together behind you. Right. Keep feeling your shoulders move back toward your feet, chest lift up toward the ceiling. Good, everybody. Exhale, lower your upper body. Turn your head to one side, release the arms, and swish the feet back and forth again. Good. You can lower your legs and bring the knees and legs closer together, about hip width apart. We're going to take one more back bend here. Let's come up onto the elbows in the Sphinx pose. Feel your chest and ribcage lift and glide your shoulders back. Good. Really push against your elbows. Feel your lower ribcage press forward as your abdomen moves down into the mat. So you can stay in Sphinx if you're comfortable with this intensity. If you want to try a bow pose, from here we're going to bend one knee, reach back for the ankle or the foot, and then the other. Once you have both feet, flex the ankles, press the feet against the hands, and lift into bow. Big stretch across the chest. But you're still squeezing your glutes, working through the hamstrings. Good, everybody. On an exhalation, lower your upper body, then let go of the feet. Good, you can do that same little swishing motion side to side. And just start to let some of that intense active energy come down in your body. Good, let's lower the legs to the floor. You can support your forehead with both hands. Just make a little pillow here facing down. And I want you to focus on really deep and low expansion of your abdomen every time you inhale. Feel it expand against the mat. Use that breath to create more space in your lumbar. Good. And then put your forehead down on the mat, take your hands outside of the chest, and carefully push up to your knees. Good. Slide your knees forward and together, and slowly sit down on your heels. Come into child's pose and wrap your arms around the legs, resting your hands by the feet, and let your shoulders melt apart. And stay with that really deep expansion of your lower abdomen every time you inhale. Feel it create space in your lower back and the right and left side. Uh, 
with your hands in front of your knees and push the floor to lift yourself upright. Good, all right, everybody. We're gonna take some seated postures. If you like to elevate your hips, grab your support. I always sit up on a blanket because my hips and hamstrings are a little tight. So those are some pretty deep back bends. We're gonna counter that now with some forward bends and twists. So let's start with a regular seated forward fold. And if you have a strap, you can use this. I like to use with a strap or you can just take your hands outside of your hips. If you're using the strap, place it around the balls of both feet. Pull against it and sit up tall in staff pose. Good. Feel yourself lengthen upward out of the lower back. Draw that part of your spine into the body. Feel your shoulders move down. Good. If you're using the strap, tuck your chin and pull against it to help guide the spine forward. If you're not, you can raise the arms up overhead and then exhale, lean forward and reach for the lower legs or feet. And then if you have the strap, you're not going to pull the whole time, so re-extend the arms. If you meet your feet, then you can hold there. If you have a lot of strap left, just keep it as a part of the pose, but try and keep your arms as extended as possible. When you're ready to come out, inhale and lift your spine upright. So you can get rid of the strap. Let's bring the soles of the feet together and open the knees out to the side for seated down angle pose. Hold the tops of the feet or the ankles and press the feet together and open the knees out to the side, contracting your outer hips. Let's sit up tall, draw your lumbar in, lift the chest, but drop the shoulders. Good. From here, tuck the chin to the chest. Exhale and guide the spine forward. Little by little. Let this evolve with your breath. Doesn't matter how far you can go. You may be different on a different day. So respond to where your body is right now, this morning, and how this post feels. But keep pressing the feet together and opening the knees apart. The next time you inhale, lift yourself upright. Good. Close the knees. We're going to keep the left knee bent toward you, straighten the right leg down in front of you on the mat. Good. So I'm going to give you an optional binding posture. If you do not enjoy this pose, you can let your left knee open to the side and take a forward bend, nose to knee posture. If you like this binding forward bend, we're going to take your right hand out to the side, raise your left arm up, and reach away from your bent knee. And then exhale, lean forward, upper body is inside of the left knee. Rotate your left arm and wrap it around the front of the shin and bend the elbow. So you're kind of holding that knee in place here. My left hand is now hanging out behind me. So this is step one. And you can stay here. This is already a deep forward bend. Step two is connecting the mind. Take your right hand and reach behind your back, clasping at the fingertips or the wrists, or you can toss a strap behind you and connect that strap. 
But if you're in this spine, actively squeeze the bent leg with your left arm. You're keeping that part of the pose compact, which is gonna help you come forward in the fold. And if at first this feels awkward, you are not alone, I promise you. It took me a really long time to find ease in this posture. And that mostly comes from getting a lot of length in the lower back, so folding forward is comfortable. And again, you can take the knee out to the side and your regular nose to knee forward bend if you prefer. But if you're in the half bind, let go of the wrist or whatever you're connecting there, and then just slowly come out of it, release the front arm, and lift up. Go straight in the left leg. Take both hands behind you, lean back, and just shake out the legs a little bit, release the knees, let that one go. Good, other side, sit up tall. Bend your right knee and bring that heel as close to your hip as you can. You want to get compact so you don't have a lot of leg to wrap around. Left hand out to the side. Reach your right arm up and lean away from that hip. We're creating length. And then exhale, lean forward. Reach your right arm as far forward as you can. Then rotate it. Wrap it around the shin and bend the elbow. We're creating that bind. You can stay here if you like. Left hand can be on the floor, just working on a half bind. Or reach your left arm behind your back, bend that elbow, and connect. Or use a strap. Right, there's a lot of different phases of figuring out this pose, so be where you are. Right, maybe you've got the physical shape. The next step is figuring out the breath. Right, we are compressed in the front of the body. And so we need to figure out how to still breathe calmly, even when we don't have a lot of space to, stand, to expand in the front. So feel that expansion in your sides and in your back. But if you're in the bind, just let go of the connection and slowly release that front arm and lift yourself up. So release the right leg. Take both hands behind you. Just lean back a little bit and wheel the legs around. Shake the back of the knees against the floor. Let that one go. Good. Nice work, everybody. Let's come down to the back. Get yourself comfortable in a reclined position. And you can take your arms out to the sides, bend your knees, and just plant the feet about hip width apart. Just a nice neutral position here to allow the spine to find its natural curvatures here against the floor. And so a little bit of natural arch in the back of the neck. You can use a blanket to support the head if you like, or if you're comfortable without, try and let the back of the neck relax. Feel your shoulders and upper back heavy into the floor. That part of the spine has a slight rounded curvature, so we should feel that part of the back pressing into the mat. And then this slight arched lumbar curvature in the lower back, the concave. So you want to feel it lifting up away from the floor just a little bit. It may be barely perceptible to you. Good. Take a few calming breaths here. Let go of any remaining active energy in your spine. And 
Once the back feels completely relaxed, bring both of your knees into the chest. Hug your arms around the legs, now feeling your lower back gently push into the floor and rock a little bit side to side, just massaging the lumbar area. And then start to rotate the knees around in a wide circle, now massaging the back of the hips, your sacroiliac joints, a couple of times in each direction. Good. and let that circling stop. We'll keep the right knee here. You can straighten your left leg down on the mat, whatever lasts. And we're going to come into a gentle spinal twist. Guide the right knee away from your ribcage a little bit, and then cross it over the body. Float the right arm out to counter that, and let this twist move slowly with your breath. If you like, you can give yourself an adjustment by sliding your bottom hip over to the right side of your mat a little bit. It's going to help line up your SI joints and give you a little better rotation in the lower back. And feel free to close your eyes, really wind down the energy in the body. Let this pose feel passive. You're not doing the pose, but rather just letting it happen in the body. When you are ready to release, just gently unwind. Bend both knees and press against your feet to slide your hips so they're centered below your shoulders. And just pause there again for a moment. Feel the natural curves coming to your spine. And then when you're ready to switch, straighten your right leg and bring the left knee in. Not too, too close, but keep a little space. And then cross the leg over your body, float the left arm out counter the leg. Good. Just letting the leg fall and maybe giving yourself an adjustment if you like. Bottom hip scoots over to the left a little bit so that you stack your SI joints. When you're ready to release, gently unwind. Bend both knees and adjust your hips so they feel centered. And just pause there briefly. Allow your spine to settle and your ribcage to relax. And then when you're ready, extend the legs and get comfortable for Shavasana, final relaxation. If there are any props that you like to use to support your body or any extra clothes to put on to stay warm, just Gather what you need with as little effort as possible and then get settled on your back. Once you are in that comfortable relaxation posture, close your eyes if you haven't already and take a deep breath in through the nose and out through your mouth. Feel your lower jaw release and relax the tongue and the throat. If it feels tight there, you can swallow a few times or stick your tongue out. Let all the muscles in the face 
soften. Feel the back of the neck relax and the shoulders sink down into the mat. And continue to mentally scan through the rest of your body. Just noticing if there are any areas of holding or active energy still. And if so, consciously releasing with your next breath out. Enjoy these few minutes of deep rest for your body and your mind. attention back to the surface and lengthen your breath. And in your own time, begin to move a little bit through the fingers and the toes. And let that turn into any other movement that would feel good to you right now. Eventually turn over to one side, curling up into a fetal pose, and just pausing there briefly to notice how you feel right now. And stay with that feeling as you come upright. Find a comfortable seated posture with the eyes still closed, maintaining that internal focus. Once you are upright, Continue to deepen your breath to help energize the body and come away from that state of deep rest. And 
Notice the sounds around you and any other physical sensations in the body. And we'll end our practice chanting OM one time. And bring the palms together. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Exhale and gently bow your head, acknowledging yourself for making time and space to practice and expressing gratitude to your body. And thank you all so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed today's class.